riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. That's fun. That's fun. I knew you'd have fun right away. I'm having the time of my life, I think. I'm having the time of your wife. Yeah, baby. All right, hang on. Ready? I'm going to play the theme music. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet mother of earth. <laughs> Here he is. Yeah. Here he is, my little truck driver, buddy. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? He, when he's not hauling, he's a giggling. Uh, I'm a giggler. Guy. Look who's here. You're at the Harlan Highway. <laughs> the only highway you want to be on. And my special guest today. Yeah. BL, Bobby Lee. Hi, guy. Hi, guy, guy. How are you? What's ya? up, huh? What, Ka? Canadian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are I, you Canadian? I, no, but I love it. You, you yeah, love, I love it up there, the forests. Because <laughs> that show alone, have you watched that show alone? Yeah. Yeah, it's up, always up where you live, oh. where you're from. Would you do it? Would you be alone? I would be alone, but I would probably only last like two days. Hang on, you want to be alone right now? Hang on. <laughs> yeah. How's it feel to be alone, guys? Oh, I don't like it. Where's my bow oh, and arrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah that's bow and good. arrow? Yeah. Can I say something about that show? Alone? Alone. I love it. Um, j j how? What are your eating habits like? Like, are you at one of these healthy eater guys? No, I eat garbage. Okay, so here's the thing. I yeah. go out with people. They're always like, you got to have the, the, ye <laughs> the yeast-free diet. Yeah. You got to have the gluten-free. Yeah. Don't eat fats. Don't eat this. Eat only b b berries and vegetables. Every year there's something new, like caveman. There was a, remember caveman was a thing? Yeah, it's all, there's always a diet. But yeah. then when you watch this show alone, and just so people know what it is, they take 10 regular folks. They're not regular. Well, they're, 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 they're like, can't, they're, they have families and stuff. They're insurrectionists. Whoa. <laughs> No, yeah, you're right. They have power <laughs> drop. They got power drops. A word. No, up. they're but they're all like kind of like survivalists. Yeah, but I don't yeah. know what that word means. Yeah, they like they like they read the Turner Diaries. What's insurrectionist mean? I'm oh, totally kidding. I'm calling it. I don't know what it's, that means. The same people that did January 6th. That was just a joke. I'm oh, just insurrection. Kidding. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I have. I didn't. There was know a what Star Trek movie called Insurrection, but that's not what I meant by it. Oh my god! I saw the sequel, uh, Caesarean section. <laughs> it was great. They cut right into space. <laughs> yeah. and, but anyway, so. What happens is they drop these 10 folks in the middle of nowhere and they got no food. They got to hunt and collect. Would they get 10 items? They get 10 items. They get a knife, a blanket. Right. A, one guy took his uh, Teddy Ruck spin. I couldn't <laughs> that believe was crazy. it. crazy. That was nuts. Yeah. He ate it. But, um, but here's where I'm going with the food thing. Go ahead. They all get, a lot of them get removed because their their nutrition starts to fade. Yeah. And it's always the guy or girl who shoots a giant mammal who wins. Yes. Like three seasons ago, a guy shot a moose. Yeah, his name is Jordan. I think it was his name. Or, yeah. yeah, something he like that. He shot a full-blown full moose. moose. Yeah, yeah, this la The last year, the guy shot a muskox. Yeah, that's right. I remember. A freaking stabbed muskox. It. Remember, he stabbed it a couple times. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. shot it, and it wasn't dead, and he stabbed it like 30 times with a knife. And then this season, uh, what's the thing? Alert? Spoiler alert? Spoiler alert, yeah. Um, And I don't know if your car has a spoiler or not, but <laughs> but um, th this guy shot a deer. Yeah, that's and right. And guess they, they all win. They all and win. And the people that eat the berries and even the fish... They all they all lose. They all lose. I, I think that um you're right. And it's like they all you have to smoke. So you catch the big guy. Yeah. Right? Like if there was a mammoth, yeah. you oh. and I oh, we would fuck it first, but you know, it's you, woolly wait, vagina. They what have was woolly, that last part? They would fuck it first. If they have woolly vaginas. Fuck a mammoth. Yeah, <laughs> they have woolly vaginas. Dude, there's a place just down the road here called the La Brea Tar Pits. Yeah. And I, know. I go I get up early and fish for mammoth down there. You can see them. <laughs> Dude, we yeah. should go one morning. We should go. We, you can fuck it, and then I can eat it. Yeah, well, I want to eat it too, but I fuck oh, it first. okay. Yeah. You yeah, so if, seasoning. So you do, well, you have to smoke it. So you slice all the stuff up. Yeah. You make a little smoker. Yeah. Right? You turn everything into jerky. Yeah. Right? And then you kind of, but I would do a combination thing. What do you mean? Like, like I would surf forage, and turf? No. <laughs> No, I would forage. It's not Applebee's, bro. I, I you're guy, you're guy, alone. You're guy, alone, guy. Guy, I know. But I would... <laughs> 
guy. Guy. Dude. It ain't Applebee's. I know, dog. You can't get a Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity when you're alone. I know, but you can get mushrooms, dog. Oh, yeah, that's what... Okay, That's what player. I was going to say, player. Okay. But- you can get nuts, mushrooms, sometimes it's cranberries. Right, but they all lose. I know, but that would be a combo. I would forage. Oh, I see. I would forage, forage. fish. Get all. Get it all. Yeah, and that's the guy who wins get, does Gets that. it all. Gets it all. But here's what where I'm going back to the diets that we have. Everyone yeah. says, don't eat cheeseburgers, don't eat fat, don't have bacon. And every one of these people on a loan, they go, I need fat. I need fat. Even when they catch a squirrel or a rabbit, they go, yeah, it's meat, but there's it's they have fat. no fat. Right. And so one lady, uh, do you remember this? She actually killed a porcupine. Uh, yeah, the insides were. She cut it open and the liver had worms or something. Yeah, 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 a little bumpy. And she goes, I have to eat it because this porcupine has more fat than anything I've caught. And I know. she ate it and she was okay. Would you have eaten it? I, I don't know. I, I would have boiled it. You boil porcupine? Well, I would have, because bo- if there's any bacteria or, or you know, liver lumps or whatever. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you're in survival mode. But but the point is, it's like, what got these people through to the end? Fat. And all we hear about is fat-free this, fat. And when you watch it at being acted out in the real world, you, you peel away all the emotion, all the fad diets, all the doctors. What it's, do we? It's fat. Fat. Yeah. How much, <laughs> How much do you weigh? How much you weigh, Bob? Let's just say, Dad, he's uh, getting uh, a little hungry. We worked up. I'm one seven, one seventy. Are you serious? Yeah. What do you weigh? Mm, I'm, you got you got that cannibalistic look in your eye. <laughs> I don't no. think you need to. Know. How much you weigh, dog? I'm uh, I'm about two fifteen. Yeah, two fifteen. That's good. You like that? For your size? Do you like to party with that? Yeah, I like to party with that. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I could be in a bungalow with you one day, man. A bungalow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going on vacation and staying in a bungalow with you, bro. <laughs> a bungalow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Describe a bungalow. <laughs> it's got walls, right? But it's like remote, right? It's kind of like a, it's a cabin, but it's kind of usually, you know what I mean, near near water. I don't know if I pitch you as a camper, though. I mean, I've known you a long yeah, time. Yeah, bungalows are different. They have like waitresses and stuff, cocktail waitresses. But do you camp and stuff? No, I don't camp. What, bungalow doesn't mean that I'm going to go to, to fucking... You know what I mean? Uh, Yosemite and uh, no bungalow is like what I meant by bungalow wow. was. You know, sometimes resorts have bungalows. <laughs> wow, dude, I, this is called bungalow rage right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think you and I in a bungalow, dude, just yeah. for the day, dude. I think we'd kill each other. Look at the anger that's <laughs> happening right now. I know. Because you question me, bro. Well, you know, a bungalow fucking schmunkalo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my dude. gungalow. Yeah, I would love to do that. But you, how long do you think you'd survive on a loan? I'd do pretty good. I'd do pretty good. You I'm think in nature. So? Well, I, I used to be a, a forest ranger up in Canada back in the day. <laughs> I, I was. There's no way. Yeah. You were a forest ranger. I was. And what did you do out there? Oh, we did everything. We did uh, fish and wildlife. We did. I was a canoe guide. I've wrestled a wild caribou to the ground. I've been charged by moose. I've been. I've lived in some pretty rem, remote places. Wow. I, I ran a bush camp of like thirty-five guys. Wow. I've probably cut down with my hands, not chainsaw, but with an axe. I've probably cut down freaking a thousand trees in my life. Can you start a fire without flint? No. Well, then you die. Then. Well, they give you a little. The, that's, little, not, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can yeah. do that though. I, I can do that, but I, I can't do the... I, I've tried that. It hurts. Yeah. It, 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 it hurts your arm when you do that, trying to start the fire thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think I'd do okay on if a If I was a masseuse, like, you know, those Asian masseuses that yeah. rock out, right? Yeah. And, you know, what they give you happy endings? <laughs> I would, that's you how- mean like a Nancy Drew book? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's and at the ending of a Nancy Drew book, it's so happy. Always, always happy. It's so happy. The mystery but, is solved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I come in and go, there's a mystery in here. Yeah. Right? The let's mystery see, were, of the sweaty I, mammoth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I would, I think, wow. uh, you know what I mean? You, because yeah. I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah. I would just yeah. do that. You anyway, let's move on. Power pop. I want power, power pop it, you know what I mean? Wow. So, but uh, yeah, this alone show, <laughs> it's like, I, I love it. It's addictive. Yeah, but you know what? Also, um, because right now the eighth season is on Netflix, but there's a ninth season on iTunes. Come on. Yeah. Feel the noise. Girls rock. <laughs> rock the boys. boys, dude. 
You know really? I mean? There's already another one out? Yeah, it's, yeah, there's only two more episodes that, like, in the next couple of weeks are going to come out. But, uh, but in this one, oh. spoiler Oh, here we go. Alert. Uh-oh. It's a, there was one kid who was getting food, right? Everything was fine, right? Two weeks in, he's just like, like what, am I, what am I doing this for? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm getting protein, but I don't want to kill squirrels no more. Yeah. And I miss my girlfriend. Yeah. And he was one of the youngest contestants ever, you know? Yeah. I think you need to be older to be on the show because it's mostly mental. Psycholo- mental. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Could you survive the psychological part of it? No, because I, it, it, the money's not big, big enough for me. Nice. You know, I mean, honestly, a half like a million. That. Would you do it? I would probably do it for the experience. Yeah, but it's a lot of these guys, right? It's like Pico in this season. That, yeah. That guy from Portland. Yeah, the, the headbanger guy. The headbanger with yeah. the nose. Yeah, thing, yeah, right, right? Yeah. He's so, he needs the money so bad because he has twins coming. On the way. And he wasn't getting a lot. He got nothing. He, he got was nothing. living off. He was he was yeah. heavy. He yeah. was Samoan fat. fat. I don't know what he is. It's Samoan. I don't he know what he is. He was something. He yeah. was fat. Yeah, yeah. And he, was he just fat. but the money is what drove him to that end. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had twins on the way. On the way. And so it's a lot, a lot of psychology. You know what I mean? Could you survive just not talking to anybody and I, just? I can't do it. Yeah. I play Tetris on a tree. I don't because you know, I have to always be doing something. Really? Yeah, I'd probably I'd probably make my own Tetris game or something. Yeah, some of these guys made like log cabins with pulley systems, and some guys made boats. It's and incredible! You think? Oh, that boat guy! Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, you got it, dude. And then they they check out. They check out. They can't do it. Yeah, it's insane. But you know what? That t- goes to show you, if there was a time machine, Harley. Yeah. Right. And you and I were in a time machine, and we went back into the frontier days. We'd be dead. At least for me. I wouldn't. You'd survive? Yeah. I, I can I can rough it pretty good, man. And in fact, I, I kind of like it. I like the rough. I like the survival mode thing. You do? I do. When yeah. I was in college, I used to kind of walk around and in my head, I'd, I'd be preparing for like like the end of days. Like I, th- <laughs> I thought, I thought this is going to be fun when I just get to roam around empty streets and walk into any old house and grab a rifle and grab some canned food and... Wow. There was some, I romanticized it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I think in a, like if there was comedians, right? I was with a bunch of comedians. I, I got to choose between comedians to do like, if there's a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I, would, I think you would be one of them. I would pick. To, to wander the waste? No, no, to, to have a fort. To defend oh, yeah, against yeah. a zombie horde, oh, yeah. I would need like what comedians would you be, want me for sure? Who, for yeah, who, who else? Who, okay, so it's you and I. Who else should we bring in there? Uh, who else? Um, God, to, and we're talking about just survival. They survival. have to be comedians. Yeah, I'm trying to. think. I think Dane man. Cook. Dane, you know why? Why he's aggro? What's that mean? He's just kind of an aggro guy. I think when he's... Because I played Warzone with him. Yeah. He gets really angry fast. Okay. So, you know what I mean? so he'd be Fucking like a raging Lee. bull. Fucking yeah. shit, Lee. You know what I mean? Like he gets yeah. crazy, right? Okay. You just need a hothead to go out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like we need somebody to go to the grocery store, yeah. right? And, and he would do it, I think. Yeah. So he'd be like the Hulk. He's our Hulk. He's our Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dane Cook. Dane Cook. So, Great. So um, we need 10. So we got those uh, we we got three already. Dane Cook. Right. We got you. Yeah. We got me. Yeah. I'm the strategist, and I'm the stealth guy. What am I? And I'm... What am I? I see you as maybe being the pastry chef, <laughs> like in the kitchen with an yeah, apron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, making well, snacks. Well, I could chop olives. Yeah, you can make snacks yeah. for the gang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do. You know what I mean? No, well, what do you see yourself as? You, you know yourself better than I do. What, I, who I would, would dig be? holes. I'd the hole digger, <laughs> for sure. Well, what... For what purpose? Several purposes. Number one, I need kimchi. So What's I that? Per- kimchi is a Korean dish, and I need to ferment it. And you, you, you kimchi, you you put it underground. What? Is, how? What is kimchi? It's cabbage, and with um, you know, you mean and Wait fermented a cabbage. I'm holed up in a house. We already got the stink of ten thousand dead corpses walking around, and you're fermenting cabbage. I need a thanks, ferment- guy. <laughs> I'll just go out and stand with the hey zombies. guy. Hey guy. Yeah, you don't guy. know how good it is, guy. Yeah, but we don't want to stink up the house with your rotten cabbage. <laughs> no, what is it's this? Outside. Octo- it's not Oktoberfest. It's, it's, it's like... I, I, I'm guy. Gonna, uh, guy. Guy. I'm going to convince you, guy. Okay, uh, guy. Look at me right now, Rock dude. All right. Roll, guy. So during the bird flu ep- epidemic in Asia, yeah. right? Koreans ran out of kimchi. Do you know why? 
Why? Because Koreans weren't getting the bird flu frequently like Chinese people were because they were eating kimchi and it, there's pro, probiotics in the kimchi, right? So then the Chinese realized that and they bought all the kimchi from Korea and got it shipped over. Come on. And they ran out of kimchi. So I'm telling you right now, if you want fucking probiotics, bro, during a zombie apocalypse, I'm your guy. I just want a can of fucking beans or something, bro. Get beans and a side of kimchi. It's fine. That, I, that's you, also number one. And number two, we got to fucking, we got to hide the poo. That's why <laughs> we got to hide the poo, dude. Right? So that's why I have the holes. You do have to dig holes. Yeah, yeah. dig holes, yeah. hide the poo. Right? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> and then we could play a game. We could also play like like a game, like you know what I mean. Where's your wallet? And I, I had it, I hid it somewhere. You know what yeah. I mean. There, yeah. There's different uses of holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what would, uh, that's my job. So we have three people: me, you, and <laughs> so Dave. We, got- we need some girls in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they all have to be comedians though? Yeah. Oh man. For this scenario, why you don't know any? Well, maybe Sarah Silverman. Yeah, she's great. She's really funny and cute. Yeah, and, but what she do though? She could do shows for us at night, <laughs> like. Like stand up sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, again tonight, yeah. for the 970th night in a row, <laughs> yeah. here she is, Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Silverman. Yeah. And she could do a Ooh, set. Well, I know Tignataro. Tignataro? Yeah, we should, we gotta have her. You How know come? I don't know this for a fact. Yeah. But she looks like she could put up the boards. Oh, hammer the boards on, Under the, the windows. on, the, on our house. Yeah. Our she just house. seems like somebody that could do that. So you say, you're saying she's bored? Yeah, she's bored. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's put some black people in there. Okay. Yeah. Who uh, Who do you know? Uh, let's see. I would say either Ian Edwards. Ian, yeah, he's he's a thinker. He's a thinker. He, we he, need thinkers. Ian's like very, he, you can see the wheels turning on that guy. Yeah. So I'd say Ian Edwards. Yeah. And I'll tell you another one. Who? Chris Spencer. Why? He's strong. Chris Spencer is strong, yeah. I think he's... No, you know who's a better? Yeah. Owen. Owen, yeah. Yeah. The, he's, he's super he's tall. tall and yeah. strong. Yeah, and yeah. they funny. He's a funny guy, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we got... So for, fuck Chris Spencer. We got two blacks. We got Ian Edwards yeah. and Owen. Yeah. So that's how many... And we got one girl. That's, two girls. Tig. Oh, yeah, Tig. Yeah, so that's three, five, five. six, six. We need four more. Brad Williams. Brad? Yeah, we need a dwarf. The little short guy? To sneak into things. Or we could use I him could as him... bait. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Use him as bait. Use him as bait. He could sleep in the holes. <laughs> he could... Not the pool. Not the pool one. Can, can you make kimchi like the way you make grapes? Like you stomp <laughs> on it? Could he... He could stomp... <laughs> yeah. He, he could stomp the cabbage. Oh, you want him to... You th- he has little feet, though, no? Yeah, but perfect to get in a hole. Oh, that's true. Little feet in the hole. Yeah, and he by gets- the way, Brad Williams is my brother, so we can joke about it. Williams. Don't worry William. about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. He's my brother. I, I got to deal with <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, don't... All right, I know. So that's seven? Seven. Yeah. Well, six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, does he count as a full? Yeah, he's, yeah. A, right. he's a fully. All right, so seven, then. Um, and then three more. More. Yeah, we need an old guy. Like you know, what, you know, everyone has like a sage, or like a, the, you know, the wise guy. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, and it's got to be an older guy that we know. Oh shoot! So uh, do you know Tom Dreesen? Yeah. Like either Tom Dreesen, Argus Hamilton. Mm. Yeah. Or who else? Oh, Fraser Smith isn't he a sagey kind of guy? What about Letterman? He's an older guy. That's better. Yeah, I think yeah, Letterman, Letterman. He's smart. He's smart. David he's got the beard. He can tell us yeah. stories. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Light a pipe. Yeah, I like it. Be like the granddaddy the grand come comedian. So that's eight. Eight. Right. And then we just need like um, two more. Who do we do? I think we need a big guy, like a big, heavy guy. Why? Just For the in, fat? Just in case we need to block the door. Oh, or, right, right, right. Or do you ever see Raiders of the Lost Ark when that giant boulder's rolling after? Oh, yeah. So if we get like, we get a bunch of zombies coming, we could like roll the fucking guy. So I don't know any big guys, do you? Yeah. Well, how about this? If Ralphie May was still with us, we could use him. Sweet, that's, sweet Ralphie. Let's re. What we do is we're Frankenstein Ralphie. Yeah. And he'd be into it. Well, oh, you know what? There's zombies. This, this is where I come in. What? 
I find out where Ralph. Check it out, dude. Oh yeah, we could bring him back because they're zombies. They're zombies, right? So I think he's probably buried in Houston or Texas somewhere. Yeah, I'll make a truck. You'll go get him. I'll go get him. I'll get him. I'll zombify him. Wow. And then I'll ride him back. Ride him, roll him back. Yeah, roll them back. Wow. Yeah. So that's good. We got. We what, got so it. We got. Well, that's eight. Two more. Two more. We got a zombie Ralphie uh, May. Yeah. Who else? Um, we need somebody that we can just spare to kill if we need be. Cosby? <laughs> I mean, he's got to come yeah, in, right? Yeah, he, he does he's have a comment. He's got to come in. Yeah. Yeah. But he's uh, old. How do we? Right. So yeah. That's the thing. It doesn't it's even like, matter. It's like you know, yeah. people are mad at him. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, cause get out the there. Cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out there. Go out there and you know. Yeah. Go, feed. Go feed. get us a potato. Yeah. Go. Okay. Good. So cause. Cause. Last guy then. Last guy. Yeah. At the zombie house. At the zombie house. Oh God. Yeah. Who do we get? <sighs> Is there any like religious comics? Like someone that could. Oh yeah, we need a fucking we need a spiritual, a spiritual guy, advisor, like a, right? Like a, like a a Christiany guy. Yeah. Do you know any Christians? Is a comic? <laughs> Is that weird to think we don't know nobody? I, I don't know if I know any Christian yeah, comic. Yeah. Do we know any that ones super religious? Um, uh, it could be a Jewish person that's super religious. Yeah. Or they don't even have to necessarily be super religious, but they have to be able spiritual. To, spiritual. Someone that meditates. Yeah. I know who. Who? Russell Brand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He does all the yoga yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Russell Brand. Yeah, and we could use his hair to knit blankets. And <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Toothpicks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's Russell, great. So Russell we have our clan now. We man. have our zombie house. Yeah. We're no longer alone. I love it. I love it. Comedians. Yeah, a week will last, we'll die. <laughs> do, you, do you find when you go out that people like, always expect you to be funny like do you, do you go to a party or you you meet people and they go they just, have you ever had someone just go be funny yeah i have a lot of people like yesterday i was sitting at a restaurant and this kid came up to me and he from behind and he goes hey buddy what's up oh. and he said you know he's that guy yeah because he thinks that that's my energy or whatever yeah, right. right and i and i i go the opposite direction so what'd you do punch him no i go so whoa it's not who i am yeah. But I had to kind of like tell him like, this is not who I am constantly. You sort of psychologically like dimmed him down. I dimmed him down a little bit. He's like, oh, my bad. Are you? No, I go, no, I'm cool. I can talk. You know what I mean? Wow. But it's like that energy is in crazy. You didn't let him just play. Well, before when I was on the road, um, back in the day, I would have people pick me up. What do you mean? Like after a show, like if I was like in El Paso or something. Yeah. Some white dude would walk up to me and just kind of. From behind, and just pick me up like this guy's funny. Come on, yeah, like I'm a trophy or something. What like, would you do? And I would, I wouldn't say anything because I was just like, oh, they paid to see me, and I, you know, and also, you know, what I mean, I don't want to. They get. To I'm not confrontational. Yeah. yeah, I'm not yeah. confrontational. But now I say, put me down. Oh, so they still pick you up? Yeah, but now how I'm, did they even get to the point of picking you up though? From behind. Oh, yeah, they sneak from they behind. They sneak up from, on from you. behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like prey. Yeah, yeah. And I have wow. had like comics punch me and stuff, and I just and I'd let them do it, and then now I put boundaries up. I go, don't punch me again. Yeah, I had my buddy Tom. Do you remember Tom Green had uh, testicular Tom. cancer? Yeah, and he told me a story once. He was doing a uh, a gig, and he went out afterwards to like a, you know a bar or something, and some <laughs> some idiot as a joke goes, "Hey Tom, you still have one ball?" And he punched him right in the in the, uh, in the and Tom had to like. Like, sue the guy, man. It was like, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, imagine having one left and, and someone punches it and you could lose it. But do you think his one testicle is in pristine condition? Because if I had one testicle left, yeah. I would manicure it. You I would, would polish shine it. it. P- polish it, shine it. Probably rest it in a jar at night, like <laughs> vinegar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do shit. Yeah, because my sacks now are not, not fresh. They're not? They're extra wrinkly. Really? Mm-hmm. Do they stink? I think so. Like what? Probably kimchi? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, fermented. My God. sacks are fermented, yeah. But if I had one sack, I think I would be, like, be more... It's like, you know, if you had one tooth, I would probably make it really white. Well, you said your sacks are fermented. You only have one sack, but two balls. You don't have two sacks, guy. I have two sacks. You do? No, you have two... Oh, it's only one sack. You have one sack, two balls. 
Oh, that's right. I never even thought about that. You've, you've done your whole life. I always thought I had two you sacks. You thought there were two sacks hanging there. Yeah, yeah. You have Siamese sacks. You're right. Wow. It's like... Um, so you thought you had four balls your whole life. Yeah, like green beans, right? They're like in, peas in a pod. In a pod. There's only one pod. There's one pod. But there's plural peas. Right. Right. So I have two sack. No, two... Two, s- two balls. Scrotums. Is that what they're called? What's a scrotum? I don't like that word. Sc- I don't know. I think... <laughs> Why? I think it's. I think that's what it is. Scrotum. But we've never said it. Is that the first time you've ever really said it? Yeah. I know. I've, I don't ever say it. I've, I don't think I've ever said it. Yeah. You call them what? Like I'm in a in a dressing room at the YMCA. I'm not going. Hey, guy, great scrotum. <laughs> You're right. I'm like, hey, guy, great sack. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't say it in a complimentary way. You Why not? Would, as a doctor, you would say scrotum, like lift up. Yeah. This, yeah. Lift up. Lift up your scrotum, please. Oh, God. And then you're like, okay. He wouldn't say lift, lift up your sacks or sack. Sack. He wouldn't say that. But when you compliment somebody at a spa, you go, hey, nice sack, not scrotum. You're right. And like, you're very intuitive. Have you done that? What? <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a sauna? Have you complimented well, <laughs> a guy's no, but sack? I ha- I've done this because like, I bring comedians to... Um, Either we spa or this other spa that I go to. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, they don't, some of them are like really kind of paranoid about being naked. Yeah. And you're I, not. I love it. Yeah. And I will like, once they get naked, I'll just purposely stare at their members to make them feel a little uncomfortable. Another word I'd never <laughs> use. <laughs> what? Member. Members. Yeah. There's three members, right? <laughs> There's, there's this, only one. No, there's a penis and the two sacks. Or the fucking... There's one the two, sack. Oh, yeah, yeah. The penis and the two scrotums. Yeah. You know this what I mean? This is starting to sound like a new kid story. <laughs> <laughs> the penis and the two sacks <laughs> skipped across the field to Mr. Clit's house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I brought you to the spa, yeah. would you feel weird? You know, I went to a boarding school when I was a kid, mm. and I had to shower with like forty dudes at a time. Mm. So I've I've been exposed to nudity. I've seen every <laughs> shape, size of of manhood you can ever imagine. So yeah. I I don't think I'd be weirded out. It might be weird that we're buddies. Mm. It's it's different when you're in a change room and it's a stranger because there's no connection. Mm. But to have be looking at each other as buddies might be a bit weird. Why? I don't you think know. I would judge you. I can do it with family, like I've done it with my cousins and stuff. And yeah, there's yeah. No, but a buddy, I don't know. It's a bit weirder. I don't know why. So if you and I were at Wee Spa down in Koreatown, yeah. which I would love to do with you one day, right? And and I really, yeah. And I looked at your stuff and I went, "Nice scrotum." You'd be weird. I think it'd be weird, but it'd be okay. Like okay, good, be, good, I, good. I knew it would be I have malicious. No, I have no gay intentions. Yeah, no, I know. Okay, good. It won't be malicious. Thank you. It won't be gay. Yeah. It would just be weird because it's something that I've <laughs> you've ne- we've never done before. Right, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I took Ian Edwards once. Yeah. And I go, you got to get naked. Like, nah, dog. He goes, nah, right? Whoa. And so we get naked. I turn around and he finds basketball shorts. Where? On the ground? Yeah, I didn't know where he got them because I had gone to the spa a million times. I don't know where you get, but he found them. He might have stolen it out of somebody's locker, but he went into the steam room and the sauna with the basketball shorts So on. wait, just so I'm clear, you call up comedy buddies and just say, hey, you want to go down to the spa, my treat, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you go down. Yeah. I don't you, call them. And you get raw. It's always after a show. So I'm so at the comedy you, store. You just go, great set. You want to go steam off? Yeah. So you go, and some of these guys say yes. Yeah, I've been there with Steve Byrne, Jay Davis one, one, one time with me, Ian Edwards. So after a set, you yeah. just go and like clam bake. You <laughs> clam bake, yeah. And, and you're naked there. And uh-huh. you just sit there in like the steam room? or what, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What goes on? Well, we're in the steam room, and I'll look over and go, nice set tonight. He said, don't look at my junk. I go, that's not what I'm referring to. Stuff like that. And then, you know, it's three in the morning, and then you got you got to go by, and then you leave. So, What's so funny? So there's a steam room open at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? Why are you, why, why you making it so weird? <laughs> I'm, I'm making it weird. 
It's three in the morning. You're in a steam room naked with your buddy. Why? What? Well, because it's cultural. So, like kimchi? Is yeah, that- like kimchi. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's like in my culture, you know what I mean? You go to steam rooms and stuff. Really? Yeah, my dad took me that to them to those when I was a kid. Your dad did? Yeah, my friend Peter Kim. So me and Peter Kim, another Korean guy. Do I know him? No, but he's a young, very funny guy. Okay. Him and I. So his dad died oh. in a steam uh, steam room in Jersey back in the day, right? Okay. Because he used to, go, you know, he had a heart attack in the, actually the the sauna, like the no the um jacuzzi. Okay. At, at a stup spa. And my dad used to take me to them. So him and I wrote a show, a, a sitcom about spas, Korean okay. spa. Yeah. And we sold it to NBC. It's there right now. So my point is, is that it's a cultural thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you fucking son of a bitch. You fucking, you, you know what, dude? Let me say something right now, dude. <laughs> say it. Let, let it out. Let me let it out. Steam it out. Steam, steam. What do you, you need know, to say? Uh, what, what I mean to say, dude, is is that it's not a weird thing, you know? And you're making it weird right now, my guy. My guy? Yeah. It's just, I find it a bit odd. Oh, what, guy? You're over there powering out a comedy set. Yeah. <laughs> it's like midnight. Yeah. You see your buddy in the hall. You, you say, grab a meal. You say, great set. Yeah. Let's go steam off together. Yeah, let's go. Because I go every night a- a- anyway. You do? Yeah. I go every night. Alone. Anyway, I went last night. Yeah, alone. You went alone. I go every night alone. At what time? Anywhere between 7 p.m. and 4 in the morning. Why Why do you go every night? It relaxes you? Because I like going into the cold plunge and then the steam room, and it, it gets my blood curdled. Like, <laughs> yeah, it relaxes me. I like it. And it's also kind of like Cheers. You know the show Cheers? Yeah. Where you know the same people and you go, hi. You know who else goes every night pretty much? Who? Polly. I oh. see them all the time. Polly Shore. I introduced him to the one on 6th and Ardmore, and he goes there every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Hyundai. So what time do you get home? And are you all pink? Like, are you all steamed? Like, what do you look like? Well, I, I'm not steamed because what I end, I close with Cold Plunge. What's that? So, I love that band. What what is it? <laughs> what, what is that? Cold play, cold plunge. You go in a hot, a cold hot tub or something, or what? What is yeah, it? Yeah. So every Korean spot has a cold plunge. It's a little pool. Yeah. And it's super cold. It's icy cold. So you go to the steam room, right? It gets your blood going. Super hot. Yeah, super hot. And what you do is, can I just stand? Yeah. yeah. So you stand. So what you do is this, all right? So th- you go to the hot one, yeah. right? And you go only waist high, yeah. right? So your upper body isn't, isn't normal, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you go to the cold one this way, and it circulates your blood fast. Wow. Right? And I, I believe, and I don't know if this for a fact, but I've Googled it, right? Yeah. Is, is that, you know, there are some cultures that have spas and cold plunges in their, into their, you know what I mean, um, routine, right? Yeah. And those people live longer. Do you want to live to be really old? I want to live longer than I am now. <laughs> like, I don't want to die right now. You want to get to the end of this podcast? How old do you want to die? I always said I would die at 103. <laughs> yeah. You know why I say that? Why? Because to me, the brain is like a computer. Yeah. And I feel like the brain is receptive to the input you give it. And so, you know, they say the brain is the strongest thing we have. And so when you give the brain the power of suggestion, let's say I say to my brain, I want to live to 103. So it starts kind of modulating the body and releasing the chemical. And it's going, okay, I've got to slow everything down and program this body to be 103. Wow. So you're kind of manifesting longevity. Because I think the brain has the power to do that. So I think if you start feeding it that, then it needs, it's like if, let's say you were lost somewhere and you were starving and you say, okay, I can't die. I got to keep going. I got to keep going my body. And, and you'll live like 30, 35 days without eating. But I, I think you can, you can manipulate the brain to like sort of program it. Can you program your life then? Uh, elements of it. I yeah. Think. Like, if, yeah. like, do you believe in manifestation? Yeah. 
You do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you let and go, I imagine this thing, I believe in this thing, this thing is going to come true. You believe that? I believe, I'm not saying it works every time, but I think you create energy and open portals to that happening. I agree. Yeah. You know what? That's what I'm going to start. You know, because I always say I'm going to die. I always say to myself, jokingly, or on stage even, I'm going to die alone and I'm going to die early. I shouldn't do that. Well, if it's just words, you're okay. If I believe but if you, I'm gonna see what I believe though. What? What? Do you, when do you think you'll die? How old? Well, I'll tell you what I want. Yeah. I want 90, 95. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what I then want. Tell yourself that. That's what I want because I just did that um, history of the world movie. Yeah. There's a new one. Yeah. Based he, on the Mel Brooks. Yeah, he did it. He yeah. did the new one that I did. Oh, he he did the new one. Yeah. Wow. But I did it because I thought I was gonna meet him. Yeah. So when I showed up at set, it was not him. He wasn't there. It was Nick Kroll and Ike Barinholtz and those guys. Oh, okay. But they're like doing it. But I go, where's Mel Brooks? And they go, well, he's, because of COVID, but he's bright and shiny and he's involved on a daily basis. And he's 95 years old. Wow. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, I want that. Yeah. Like I want to be able to like still do shit at that age. Imagine being at that age. You've done everything yeah. in the business yeah. and you're still doing it. I think you need, I think this is what I think. I think you need, you, you got to keep dreaming. You got to keep you got wanting, it. wanting things. You got to, yeah. I think once you go, you know how sometimes, you know, a, 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 a couple will be married for 80 years and then the wife will die and then the the, the husband will die like two days yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It happens a lot. It happens a lot, yeah. right? I think that for me, it's like if I meet a woman and we're 80 and she dies, I have to think I want more pussy. You know what I mean? I think that's what it is. I can't go, oh, I, I miss her and I'm going to die too. Yeah. You know I mean, you can't do that. Yeah, you got to keep go, going. I, I'm going to go to that app, Our Time. What's that? Our Time is an app for um, people that are over 50. It's a it's a dating app. Really? It's called Our Time. Are you on it? Why? I'm, I'm not going to do Our Time because it's like, I, 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 I play young. So you do Toys R Us time. <laughs> No, in between, in between. Wow. In between, bud. Holy kimchi sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, here's, look at this. What? So, so it's a little test. Clam chowder. Be funny. For me and you. Like comedians, they go, oh, just, they think you can make anything funny. Look okay. at this. Be, uh, be funny. Be funny on this? Yeah. All right, can I see the thing? What is it? Clam chowder. Yeah. Clam chowder, huh? Oh, gee. Gee. Uh, chunky. Just like your yeah. wife. That's pretty good. But why chunky, you know? Yeah. Was there a point where it's like someone's eating clam chowder and they're like, hey, guys, this ain't chunky. It's like uh, your know. wife. <laughs> <laughs> your wife's chunky, huh, Pat, Jim? You're right. Jim. Creamy, like Creamy. your wife. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. what I mean. It's people it's think hard. it's hard. Yeah. But people come up to you. Have you ever been in a situation where... I, I imagine this is what Ralphie Mays come look like. Oh, whoa, <laughs> God. I, now I do like need chunk, to get, Like Chunky. Yeah, yeah, I, need yeah. to, I need to get to the sauna. <laughs> I got to steam off after that comment. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. God, yeah. my God. You can put the clam chowder away, man. I'm done with that segment. You know what I mean, dog? I know, but it's hard, right? It's to really hard to do. Funny. to be Yeah. I used to uh, be... You have, a, you have another one? No, I used to hang out with Norm MacDonald a lot. Me and Norm I love were, him. were really close. God, I loved him. And um, we used to go play tennis. And after we'd play tennis, we'd go into like the 7-Eleven. And we'd always do this thing where we'd go, okay, we're going to go in together. And each of us has to point at one item and make a joke about it. And it was really hard. It's like so hard. like Like... People think making jokes as a comedian is, is easy, but it's not. But I'll, I'll never forget Norm did this. It's the only one I remember. But I pointed to, you remember those things, animal crackers? Yeah. And I pointed to the animal crackers, and Norm just goes, ah, ah that, that horse cock didn't taste very good. <laughs> <laughs> so there you like, go. Yeah, it, like Saturday night, I, I, I went to the Bray Improv because they had a fallout, and I go, I'll do a show there. And I did a That's new, a long drive. I did a new joke night there. I did two shows. You did okay. Right. Yeah. You know, and they were sold out, and so it was fun. But I put a bunch of young comics before me, like yeah. six of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I wasn't gonna do a long time. I was only gonna do twenty. Twenty. Okay. Right. But they were killing it. Right. Yeah. 
And when I went up there, it, at first it was like, ah, yeah. I brought a notebook. Okay, right? you were going to do new material. With some. Okay. Right. And as soon as the third one came out, the joke came out, new joke. Yeah. I didn't know the wording. Right. Oh shit! And I, 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 immediately, I lost the crowd. You could just tell that they're like, "Oh, that doesn't oh. make any sense." Right? Then I said the part that was supposed to be funny. Yeah. Right. And I completely lost them. And then the electricity of the fucking club went out. Oh, perfect. No, that's not perfect. No, Nightmare. It sounds like you your joke tanked, and before you could be held responsible, everything <laughs> went black. No, it tanked first. Right the then, I, first. then I moved into another job. Oh, into another and one. And then the electric. And then oh. I was standing there with no mic. Oh damn! And going, oh, I don't know what, what's going on. Yeah. It took like two minutes. Then it came back, back on, on, and I tried wow. to get back into the act. It was yeah. terrible. I was sweating. But comedy, man, people stand up sometimes. Can, I mean, we at the store yeah. and the improv, we do many shows there. It's yeah. fun because it's like. You're with your pals. It doesn't really matter. But when you're on the road, yeah. it, it gets hard. I did it once in Vegas and the alarm went off, the fire alarm, right wow. in the middle of my act. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And what crazy. happened? I just started mimicking the sound. So I, I had the mic and I, it was like going whoop, whoop. And I was just going whoop, whoop, whoop. And I for did how long? For, I did it for like two minutes. And then I <laughs> and then I just got up because they couldn't fix it. So and I, you just I, got I, off stage? I got to finish my act early. Yeah. Were you bummed or were you happy? No, it's kind of fun. I, I like when weird, unexpected stuff happens. At the Brea Improv, I was there last year, and on a Saturday night sold out, a, uh, a guy walked up on stage, like a six-foot-three guy in military shit. Oh, my God. Just climbed up the front of the stage 20 minutes into my act, and bigger than me, and I'm a tall guy, and I was like, dude, what's going on? And he's like, I just want to say, Mr. Williams, uh, you're a real funny guy, and thanks for what you do. That's it. And I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Like, Did they kick he, him out? No, he went no security, nothing. And so I just, I, I was like on my own up there, and I go, I go, well, thanks, dude. And then I thought, how do I get rid of this guy? And I said, you want to do some jokes? And I tried to hand him the mic, and most people are terrified. Of public speaking. Yeah, you thought and, that was going to be the thing. And it worked. He goes, oh, no, I better get out. And he, he walked off stage. Wow. But in this day and age, man, when you don't know what people are up to, like shootings and stuff, and this guy had military shit on, I was like. Oh, my God. But I'd I, be so petrified. But see, that goes back to the zombie thing because I was, for whatever reason, I don't know, I'm not trying to sound like a tough guy. I was just totally composed. I just stood there, and, I, and I, I swear to God, I curled this fist up over here. I switched mics. This is my punching hand. Mm. And I just slowly drifted back from a bit put the mic, and, and just had this hand, like, ready to either swing or put up a block. Like, my mind was going, wow. what's his next step? But I, I didn't panic. I was just like, and then I... And then I just kind of controlled it. and, oh, and it I wish I was like that. It was weird. I'm not like that. But that's what I mean. If we yeah. get in that zombie house, that's yeah. kind of my kind of vibe that i would but bring. were you were you quiet because you're in it was traumatic because sometimes like if something traumatic happens with me yeah. i do i slow down and i'm just in this like fight or flight response yeah and i just don't know what to do i'm like you know what i mean no i i was in full stand your ground control the situation mode whoa there's no f fight or flight there was fight i had my arm ready if he came but there was no like I wasn't, wasn't scared at all. It's funny because based on your comedy, yeah. right, you would not seem like, it doesn't seem like you would be like that, but I think knowing you as a person off stage, yeah. you are like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, because yeah, on stage you're so silly and so lighthearted. Yeah. Right? But it's like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But once I got to know you off stage, I'm like, there is, you know, a nature guy in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is you're, a nature guy. You're a guy. nature guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also very like, um, like the last time you did my podcast, um, you know, we don't have to get into it, but I'm just saying you, you gave me some insight about love. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I thought to myself, wow, I, yeah, I mean, Harland is a romantic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a romantic, man. I uh, I actually wrote you a poem about that, about love. We did talk about love last time. You wrote a poem about love? I wrote a poem about your love. 
Oh, I did. You did. I wrote a poem about, you know, I took away from from when I talked to you and Kalila about the pain uh-huh. and the emotion and everything you were dealing with, and I processed a lot of it and I thought about it because I've been through it. We've all been through it, mm. and it's kind of it's hard, it's heavy, but I feel like it's there. F- everything happens for a reason. So I wrote a poem about it for you. I can read it to you or I cannot read it to you. It's up to you. May I hear it? You want to hear it? All right. Get it out, ladies and gentlemen. My poem for Bobby. Oh, my God, you did. Yeah. I've been thinking about you and your pain. It's tough. I know, but it's tough stuff. It's so, can I just say something, please, before you even begin? Oh, if you want me to begin, even I do want you to begin. It's up to you. I do want you to, but um, I want to say that um, there's a duality going on here with me. Speak. I will. It's because I know you. Because when I look at your face, you know what I mean. How skinny it is. It's a little pointy. It's it's sort of like a raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Like a hairless Agreed. raccoon. Yeah, yeah. Bald. Bald, Bald yeah. raccoon. Yeah. You look like a scavenger to me. Just that's like a why, raccoon. That's why I'll be no, but, good at the zombie But when, I, when you're on stage and stuff, and because you're so silly, and I, you know, because I also know you from the movies that you've done, right? Sure. Right? And then, like, this other side of Harland, right? This romantic, this heartfelt guy who also what made me open my eyes to you was, you know, you've lived a life, like, outside of comedy, yeah, you know that's I mean, true. you've worked, you've done different things. Even today, when you talked about you were a forest ranger or whatever you were saying, like I did not know that about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you've lived a life. Yeah, you know? and so there's just different aspects. You know, um, can I just tell you before you read the poem? Sure, if you want me. I to. want you. To, I fucking want you to, man. Okay. No, you know what? Read the poem because the thing I no, want. No, you go. I know. I don't think. You, all right. I'll... I, but it has nothing to do with the fucking Good. Roman. <laughs> Go, guy. All right. So I don't know if you know this, but a couple of weeks ago, we did the main room at the comedy store. And you crushed, I thought. Me yeah. and you? Yeah. Okay. Right? Because we do it a lot. We so, do it a lot. Okay. Yeah. So a couple of weeks, it was a Friday. It was like three weeks ago, maybe. Okay. Right? I never told you this. Okay. And I got in a fight with an audience member outside of the club because of a joke that you told. Really? Yeah. Like a physical fist fight? No, I was kind of screaming at her, like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Like, Whoa, like, yeah, 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 really? That, yeah, yeah. So you did a joke about the hole in the oh, yeah, neck the and the dolphin. Yeah, yeah, it killed. Yeah. And you threw the fish up. Yeah. Right, yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. It's such a fucking funny joke, right? Right. But you don't know this, but a group of girl ladies, five women, yeah. walked out of the club when you told that joke. They did? Yeah. Whoa. And I followed them out because I love when that happens. Wow. Because I want to, I, I like, I like going on into confrontation with sensitive audience members, right? And yell at them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, why'd you guys walk out? And like, that was too far. Whoa. And I go, what was? He goes, my dad had throat cancer. Whoa. Right. I go, I know, but it's just a fucking joke, and he wasn't talking about your dad's throat, throat yeah, cancer. Yeah. And this, and I, I was like, very being very like, uh aggressive almost you know what okay, I mean? okay okay and they're like well we came to see you i go don't even come in whoa really? don't watch me i go don't watch me wow you know what i mean because I, I felt like i was defending you or whatever <laughs> thanks yeah, buddy. yeah 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 it, it drove me crazy wow. i hate sensitive people well you know it, it's interesting because i think what maybe that person missed if you know if 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 we don't do a joke about a tracheotomy, then we can't do a joke about a car crash. We can't do a joke about a dead dog. We, yeah. can't, we have to be able to talk about everything. Yeah. And as you said, they have to know that it's not at, at about their father or their dog or their car accident. As humans, we have to laugh at everything. And, yeah. and I think what they're missing is sometimes if you take a tragedy and someone laughs, makes jokes about it, it helps you process it. We're not doing it to be vindictive or malicious. Or mean, even. Or even mean. It's, it's to take something that's really hard and hurtful and maybe make a crack in it and lighten it up and, and make you go, okay, whoa, you know, and even maybe even put a slight smile on your face. Yeah, I had a girl come up to me after a show, and she goes, I don't have a dark purple vagina. An Asian girl said that. 
Oh. And I go, because I do a joke about how Asian women have dark purple vaginas. Like jellyfish? Yeah. And it was just a joke, right? Yeah. She, she was adamant about it. She hunted me down. She goes, I don't have one. It's normal. I, I was just kidding. It was just a joke. You mean you, did, you didn't say prove it? <laughs> yeah. That's I should have done that. Yeah, but then you're getting into like yeah, no, weird yeah weird territory there. She you know? got mad about that. Yeah, people get mad about a variety of things. It's like it's like I'm just you know here's the thing, I just write down what get, makes me chuckle. Yeah, in my car, and I say it. Yeah, and if 90, 80 percent of the people in the audience, seventy percent like it, I keep it. You know what I mean? But there's always that little percentage of people that take it literally or. Right. Like yeah. when I told you you only have one sack, and you got a little animated. Guy. I got a little animated. You got because, testy. Well, the reason why is because I thought I because you know it's like something that I thought. Did you hear what I said? Testy. You got testy. Read the poem. <laughs> Read the poem. Are you sure? Yeah. I got to put my glasses on. Okay. Where are they? Where the hell are my glasses, guy? Oh, my God. Try to read them without the glasses. See what happens. I can't. I can't see without the glasses. Where are my glasses? Let me go grab my glasses. Are these it? Oh, there they are. Good eye. See, I can, how weird. I can't even see my glasses. So you, you, let me ask you something before you yes. begin. And if you want me you, to you wear stop. Con, you wear contacts? Can't. No. Why? Because I'm, I freak out about touching my eyes. Like, I, I, I can't put my finger near my eye. It flips me out. I get squeamish. Let me ask you this, then. When you're Go driving ahead. around, you don't need glasses, or do you? No. Need? It's only for stuff up close, like poems. Oh, so you have uh, short-term... Memory loss? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Go ahead. So this is, um, this is my takeaway from my conversation with you and Kalila. Is this a comedy or is this real? Because I have to, real. I have to. All right, well, so I have to adjust my heart and and my mind, and yeah. to be in the same um, rhythm and level. Yeah, this is like. Okay, let's go. The feelings I got from your relationship and you breaking up and all that stuff. Okay. In the dark and lonely night, a whisper called my name, a million miles away filled my heart with pain I knew the voice so well like a river of endless dreams it drifted through the stars above and made its way to me burdened with lost promises confusion and cruel lies I crumpled to my knees as inside something died as tears slid down my face long shadows crawled the walls why had time abandoned us when we thought we had it all? And as the whisper trailed away like a phantom through a crack, time could not take her all from me, though she was never coming back. I could still see her sparkling eyes shining in the moonlight mist. I could feel the loving softness of her every velvet kiss. Why are souls brought together if never to survive? Because in their brief existence, they make us feel alive. And love is never wasted. It's stronger than life itself. You carry it forever and keep it on your heart shelf. Then, as the night went quiet, the whisper come and gone, I knew that she was calling me to say nothing was wrong that what we had and who we are was perfectly meant to be, that forevermore I'm a piece of you and you a piece of me. And so I stood and smiled, a light burned in my heart. Her whisper was the ending, but was also a new start. This was her final offering as the night turned into day. I knew the love that we had and shared will never Go away. Wow. Really good. Man. Sad. But beautiful. And true. Well, yeah. I wanted to write something to you that 
was what I took from you and her, but was also my experience with love and I think everybody's, but also at the end, hope, light. Yeah. It's, what I gathered from that is, in, in, in a gist, is um, that the last 10 years, it wasn't meaningless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? It was, there were um, memories and things that I'll always carry with me. Always, yeah. Yeah, and the love will always be there. You know what I mean? Always. Yeah. And um, it's weird, yeah. It's beyond um, just this, you know, this, the title of just a relationship ended. You know what I mean? There's so much more. There's so many different layers and new, you know, things. And I will always love her and I'll always treasure what we have. And, um, and also maybe there's room for a different kind of love from, yeah. from somebody else. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah. How do you know? Cause I, I, I think I told you once before you, you, you don't have a choice. That's right. L- love, love comes at you like a, like a tsunami. You, th- you think you can control it. You think you can put up a barricade. You think you can get the Doppler weather head start on it. But when love rolls over you, it's, that's the beauty of love. You can't stop it. Yeah, but I know a guy who um, can't get love at all. He's never had love. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's ugly. <laughs> no. This dude is ugly, dude. <laughs> and he's like never had sex. He hasn't had ugly love? No, he can't even get ugly love, dude. Wow. He's ugly. So what I'm saying is is that for that guy, it doesn't work. Not yet. How old is he? Almost 60. He's done. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm saying I've known in my life like older incels. You know, yeah. dudes that are just, you know what I mean? They're just on the computer all day. Oh, yeah. They're, you know what I mean? They kind of live at their p- parents' garage. But see, that's that's exactly why you need to let love in because not everybody gets it. I have I have a friend who's probably I think he just turned fifty, yeah, and said I've never been in love, and I'm going holy God! Like it's it's really probably the best feeling in life. It is, but is it artificial? Because can can, can let me just ask yeah. you some questions, okay? Yeah, let me put the poem. Because when you first meet somebody, right? Yeah. Like when I met Kalila, and I still love her very much, obviously. Yeah. But it's like you know when I. You know, it changed. The first two or three years, it's almost like you're in a pink cloud. Right? Oh, yeah. It's that it's fluffy like everything, love. Everything, yeah. you know what I mean? You could eat their saliva off a, a Ritz cracker. Yeah. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you would stare at them late at night and go, look at how beautiful, and every little thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's either funny or the greatest thing. And then it just kind of those things over the years die. You know what I mean? Or they disappear or they're not as frequent. And then problems arise. And yeah. then, you know what I mean? And friction. And, uh, and you know, so what I'm saying is, is that that first couple of years, and it's been like that. I've been, obviously, I'm 50 years old, so yeah. I've been here before. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been in them before. Yeah. They're all, they start off strong. Yeah, right. Always. They start off like, you know, like, you know, a dream almost, yeah. right? And yeah. then reality hits and it changes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what my point is, and I know dudes... That are still together because of their kids. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. As soon as my you know, youngest kid graduates from high school, I'm, I'm out of this yeah. thing. You know what I mean? So it's like you see a lot of those um, relationships as well. So I'm just wondering, you know, I this is what my hope is. And I, I have yet to meet anybody that's like this. Okay. But I would love to meet somebody that goes, you know, you know, the first feeling that I had that first couple of years, it's always been like that. You yeah. know what I mean? For the last 30 years. Well, you know what I think it is? You, you, It sounds a little hokey, but I think you have to nurture it. And what the problem is, is you have that initial feeling. You know what it took to create that. You knew how to treat each other. And you slowly let that bubble crack. And the treatment starts to change. And the taking each other for granted starts to change. And sometimes the words start to change. And it, it, I don't know. It, it's... But the- but a lot of it, Har- Harlan, yeah. you know, is the mystery of it all. Right? Yeah, that's big. Right? Yeah. It's big, right? Yeah. And once the mystery is revealed, once you solve it, yeah. right? Yeah. It then reality hits, right? And you're left with a human being, which is great. Yeah. But my point is, is that for me as a comedian, and this is something that I've been kind of struggling with, is because 
I've also I've I've had problems with drug addiction and other you know things. You, you know, know what's funny? I never knew that the whole time I've known you. I think I saw that on a podcast like a few weeks ago. I didn't know about all your history with that. Yeah, because I, I had been sober most for most of it. Okay, I had good. seventeen years of sobriety. Good, so in good. that in that chunk, you know what I mean. Obviously, yeah. you didn't, I, it's something I, I don't talk about. Yeah, but, I didn't know about it. But I just had one six months ago. Realized my point is is though. And because I do stand up, right, which is, and I, you know, you know, you do scary things, right, to hit those dopamine. Yeah, And yeah. when you crush on stage, yeah. it hits, you know, things in your brain that like, that much like a drug yeah. does, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I use relationships in that way too. It's like, it hits mm. these dopamine things. Yeah. And then eventually what happens is the drug stops working, right? So for me, it's like, I have to like... Maybe the next time I go into a relationship to look at it for what it is before, you know, buying into the whole dream mystery, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a lot of it has to do, and I want to be crude, but it's like, you know, a, maybe a certain percentage of it is like, well, I want to have sex with this person. Yeah. Right? So, like, you know what I mean? That excitement. Yeah, yeah. Like, when is it going to happen? Oh, my God, this happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. All that stuff. And then once you, she opens herself up to you, and you do it two, three thousand times. Yeah, you're just kind of like, uh, right? It's all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like that. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's like a lot of elements to it that like I can't. Yeah, the, you understand? The or no? human spirit is very restless. It's 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 very, and that's why the divorce rate is probably over fifty percent, and that's why people cheat all the time, and that's why it's so tough to be a human. So it, does true love really exist? Is one of my question to you is. I think true love really exists, but I don't know if it can manifest in that kind of fantasy land where everyone's skipping and holding hands for their whole journey. I see. Um, you know, my parents were very much in love, but it started off probably as romantic and ended up as a very deep-rooted kind of they loved each other through religion and and because they were you know unified under God versus hey I can't wait home to come through the can't wait to get home come through the door and kiss your face you know it, right it, so everything yeah everything fades and so you sound like you might be one of these people that might need a like a new relationship every few years to yeah but I don't see it for me those it's are like, tough I did that yeah. before Kalila like Kalila was the first one I did 10 years with right Wow. Right before they were always two, two and a half years and they were done. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I don't like, I want to believe that I've, I'm going to meet somebody and go, oh, this is my life person. You yeah. Know what I mean? And I thought Kalila was that. And she's in many ways still is my life person. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to know her for the rest of my life. And I'm also, for most of my relationships, a lot of them, I still know the people and I hang out with them. Yeah. Like Sarah. My one of my previous girlfriends has done my podcast with Kalila. Yeah, yeah. Kalila and her are very good friends, yeah. and I still see Sarah all the time. You know, and so, um, so I don't. I just I don't know. I mean, you're alone, right? Yeah, I'm not with anyone. Right yeah, now. right. So yeah. my point is that you and I are the same age range. Yeah, we both have yeah. the same occupation. Yeah, right. And um, I'm just I want to ask for both of us, maybe you as well, is, yeah. is that do you think she's out there for us? Yeah, I always believe that that she is, and and you just hope that the, the planets align and it happens. I've I've also accepted it might not, but I always remain optimistic that it will. Because I think if you don't keep hope alive and you dream and you, as you said earlier, you manifest. I, I think you do end up like that guy just sitting in front of your computer and life passes you by. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would hope there is someone's out there for both of us and all of us, you know, and that's kind of the way life works, but you just don't know when, when and where, and that's sort of the fun of it too. You yeah. Know? But we, you and I are a specific breed. I think stand-ups, obviously we're n normal human beings, but I just think that there are reasons why we do what we do. Yeah. I don't See, know about I you. Don't I, know. I, I, I don't buy I don't, into that. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, I, I, don't, love I don't like that. You don't I, like it. I hate that. You hate it. Yeah. You don't like it. You hate it. You hate it. I don't like categorizing people. I love it. Because I think of you as such an individual. And even though you do comedy the same way 200 other guys do, I never think of you as a comedian. I just think of you as an individual. I don't like, I don't like clumping people together. But there group. is, but there is, it's, it's like the, it's like in a, like I'm in 12 step groups. 
That's what I, I do. You're I, in? Okay. I'm in 12 step groups, right? Okay. And I've been in them since I was 17 years old. Okay. Right? So it's like, and my relationship with people that are in my 12 step groups, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some of them are lawyers. Some of them are plumbers, diff- different variety of life, women, men, right? And they have these, this deep connection. And I think the through line is, you know what I mean? Alcoholism and drug addiction. We, yeah, yeah. we relate to it on that level. That Therefore, we have a stronger bond. I believe th- th- that's the same with comedians as well, that we have a specific bond because we do a specific thing and people don't understand, you know what I mean, what it takes. Because it's it's not something that you go, you go oh, I want to be a comedian and all of a sudden you're on The Tonight Show. No, yeah, it takes yeah. years, you know what yeah. I mean, of dedication and a lot of pain. Yeah, it takes getting beyond this. Yes. It's it's not easy to write it's a not joke. Easy, yeah. right? It's not easy, right? It's not easy, right? So, um, you know, like Saturday night when I told you I did the Bray Improv, I, yeah. I had five comedians that were younger. I always use young, fresh people, right? Yeah. And I was in there with um, maybe two or three girls, and they were in the green room with me. And I realized that we all come from abusive dads. Whoa. Right? Interesting. And trauma in that way, right? And we we start talking about our dads and all the things that they did, the abandonment, the f- physical violence, you know what I mean, the verbal, you know what I mean? You right? were physically abused? Oh, yeah. So when you, you know what I mean, when I bonded with them, you know, to me, that's why maybe, I know a lot of comics like Sebastian Maniscalco, maybe you, um, there's a lot of them that didn't have, they had pretty nice childhoods. Yeah, I had a great one. Right, yeah. but, but a lot of times... I think for the most part, even the ones that I hang out with have the similar background. Huh. You know what I mean? So that's why I say it. I think you're an anomaly, actually. Huh. I do. I think why, you're an anomaly. Why is your mouth going down like that? Is it? You're having a. I'm having a stroll. You're having, you're not, <laughs> no. You're, no, I, I think just, you're having an anomaly. No, I do this because I go, I, I think I'm right. So I do this. Yeah, yeah. That, well, you're not insulting me. Okay. I did have a good upbringing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I did, you know, every family has their issues and whatnot. But Yeah. Um, I think there are, um, I can count Al Madrigal, you, um, but there are most, for the most part, there was something that happened. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. Something that sparked it, some sort of traumatic thing or something or a need that was never there, you know what yeah. I mean? That we're looking for through an audience and whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, it is a weird thing to go up on stage. I don't know if you think this, but sometimes I'm on stage and I go, and I'm doing well, and the, like eight, nine minutes in, I think to myself, what? what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. It's weird. I mean, I'm just... You know what I mean? You ever think about that? You're on stage, there's hundreds and hundreds yeah. of people watching that, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're just, you know, you're just going, looking around going, why do I need this? Yeah. Well, what is this? And sometimes you have those thoughts while you're, while you're performing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're speaking the joke and your brain's thinking something else. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Very, it's yeah, it's very bizarre. Every now and then that happens. Yeah, yeah, it's very bizarre. Sometimes you're in it and you don't think about it. But a lot of times, like, I, I question, like, why do I need this in my life? Yeah. Because if I don't do it, I'll be depressed, I think. Like, imagine if they said, like, I'm a doctor, Mr. Williams. Yeah. You have a throat thing, and you can't really do stand-up anymore. Would that depress you? Oh, yeah. It would be crushing. It would be life-altering almost. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. So there is a need for it. There's a need. What does it give you? But it's also something you decided to do early on, and it, it creates an energy and it creates an excitement for you that you probably didn't want an ordinary life where you knew it was coming. You like unpredictability because stand-up, no matter how good you get, you can bomb on any given night, so it's very unpredictable. And you probably didn't want to be a guy that woke up every day and went, oh, I'm going to the office from 9 to 5. I'm, I'm going to have a life that can... Can go in it, all yeah. These. I I like I. You know what show business is, right? It's a lot of pain and a lot of rejection. Yeah. But, I, but you get little lottery wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you won, right? Yeah. So like years will go by, and nothing will happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least for me, you know, nothing will happen. I think for most people, yeah. Yeah. You don't get anything good. No good yeah. calls. You know yeah. what I mean? And then every once in a while, someone will call you. Yeah. You, this show or this movie one or this is happening, right? Yeah. And you go, really? Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it gives you, it re-sparks some, some dream that you have yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 
you get these mini, sometimes you'll bomb, it's terrible, but sometimes you'll have a magical set where you go, I just won a little lottery. That, that was just amazing. You know what I mean, that feeling. Now, there's another feeling I get sometimes, too, which can be on the negative side. Which is what? Is sometimes I go, is the devil just leading me along enough so that he takes control of my path? Are they lottery wins? Or is the devil planting... <laughs> Little nuggets to keep me going down this road. The wrong road. Maybe. You really think so? Sometimes. Is that I, a joke or no? No, sometimes, you, you know, you always look at the yin and the yang. So sometimes I think, oh, did I just get this thing? Because now I'm wait, going. Wait, wait, wait. What you're saying. You know, okay, so what you're saying is this, right? That maybe you and I could have been helping more in the world by doing something else. Right. And the, and the devil was like, no, come here. The devil, come. here's another girl. Here's another gig. Here's another thing. thing of money. Here's another thing. But then I reverse engineer that back and I go, what am I doing? I made this person laugh. I filled them up with joy. I created this show that blah, blah, blah. Maybe I only did go out with a girl this long, but maybe I helped her get over this. She helped me with that. So you can always look at it at both sides, but sometimes I, I look at, you know, I've never thought of it that way, but I think th there are times where I, maybe I do think that because there are times where I think, is this the healthiest atmosphere for me? Right. Right. But the, here's the other thing I'll say. You could say that about any job. You think a trial lawyer doesn't go, okay, I'm going to work 52 hours a day, blah, blah, blah. And then I won the case. God, that was, that took so much out of me. Well, your next case starts in a week, but and then, then there you go again. And so, what job doesn't do it almost, you know? Yeah, it's it, it's so. it's so straight. I think it's because you watch a show, like let's go back to Alone. Yeah. Right? That's primarily what humans did yeah. to survive. Hunters there was no, and gatherers. Yeah, yeah, there was no like, you know what I mean, where's my TV show? There was yeah. no audience. There was no. Yeah. That's essentially what we are, right? Yeah. We're organisms trying to survive, that's right? That's it. Right? Be but in modern age, we've developed these other things because we have the shelter and the food and all that shit taken care we of, right? We fabricated the illusion of society. Right. Yeah. We've, so what's, what, you're right. So what is real? Reality. Why are we here? Well, it's, it's all, we, we, I say humans are here just to service humans. We wake up, we give, we make money. We give that money to the plumber. The plumber gives that money to the restaurant. The restaurant gives it back to us when they come and see our show then we give it to the car dealer. Yeah. So we're, it's all just a flip-flop. And that was what's interesting about COVID because everything stopped. Yeah. And it made all of us go, why are we here? What, what, why, what are we doing? Yeah. No matter what your job is, like, what's the point? And so that's the thing you have to, you have to wake up, look at the positive side of everything and you have to look at what we do is in this world where things can get maybe dark we spread joy and a little light despite maybe some of our issues that we might have had with our family or this or that. So, yeah. Yep. I think for me to counter all that, those thoughts that you said about the devil and all that stuff, I think what I do these peri peri periodic, is that the right? Yeah. Yeah. Spur periodic spurts of kindness. Good. Right. And I, I don't know if it's because I'm a kind person. I do it because for some reason I just kind of don't want to go to hell or whatever, right? So I, I maybe I don't know what the fear is, but I I, I, I want to like, you know, sometimes I like, well, there's, I don't want to, I've never, I don't like talking about, it, but one time like recently a homeless guy, he had a, at, in front of a 7-Eleven, he had like a shopping cart. Yeah. And I just kind of, and there was like a white book, like a notebook that had rubber bands at closing it in. Yeah. It's probably his your manifesto yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But um, I slid some money in there and I just got, you Good. know what I mean? I try to do things like that to go yeah. just to give back or whatever, right? Yeah. But then sometimes a homeless, I'll, I'll be really rude to a homeless person too. So I don't know. You know, I go, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's look, humans <laughs> are complicated, wired. You know, it's like if you ever. If you ever take a, like a TV or, or a radio and smash it on the ground and it's wires and computer boards and 
That's what we are. We're so complex. You're, you're allowed to have days where you're antsy. You're allowed to have days when you're generous. It's just part of being human. What, so let me ask you Harlan Williams' Harlan, Harlan yeah. Williams's opinion about something. Yeah. When you, <laughs> when you finally die, what is your honest opinion? What do you think happens? My honest opinion is that we are organic and we get eaten by worms and grubs and we deteriorate in the mud. But I know I don't have the answers to everything and I know that the universe and the world is such a big, complex place that it's not beyond the realm of my comprehension that our spirits or our energy or something goes somewhere. Mm. I. It's too big to know the answer. The yeah. world is so perfect, but so chaotic at the same time. The fact that there's symbiotic relationships out there in nature, you know, like a, a, a little mite can live on the beak of a hummingbird's, you know, beak and it uses its, its nostril to get its food. Yeah. A, a shark can open its mouth and a feeder goes in and cleans the teeth and the shark... You know, it, it, it's just, it's so complex and yeah. everything fits and it's it's too big of a miracle. Or like there's like, in Africa, there's like rhinos and there's certain birds that go on their backs because the rhinos, when they stomp, insects come, right? right? So they eat the insects, right? right? They yeah. use it as, and the rhinos, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. it because, you they know what I mean? They sit on their back yeah, and yeah, eat the yeah, ticks. Yeah. The ticks, yeah, yeah. And so the, the world, everything sort of fits together and feeds each other. So, so I have to believe that there's got to be just so many answers we don't know. But and see, so my that's... mind is open to the possibility of as kooky as it sounds, and this isn't from a religious point of view, a spirit or something could could go somewhere or an energy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you think about every time I step on an ant, I don't think of it that way. I just go, oh, it's a dead ant. They don't, what, they don't have a spirit too? So it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, you're just yeah, a yeah. stupid ant. You yeah. huddle around a pile of raspberry <laughs> jelly like a bunch of retards, you know? <laughs> but it, it, it's like, so you, you just they're, they're, you just don't know. You don't know. It's too deep. It's too... It's but too that's deep. why it's exciting because of the mystery of it all. I mean, if it you is. if you walk around and you look up at the stars, right? You have, there's 300 billion fucking planets in our yeah. galaxy alone. There's yeah. other galaxies, and you, you know what I mean. And there's just it, you, and even the buildings that we created, and, yeah. you know what I mean. And nature, how that works, the yeah. relationship. I mean, there's just so much to it, right? Yeah. There's no way to comprehend it all. You can't. So you just kind of look at life as a mystery, and I think that's what the whole point is: is to be in awe of it. I'm in awe of it all. Yeah. And I'm in it. I'm st alive and I'm, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. a part of it in some weird way. That's it. You just have to know you're a part of it. And I remember a buddy of mine once said, I go, how you doing today, buddy? And he says, it's great to be alive. And that's, you, all you got to do is you got to be in the pudding and just be ready when the zombies come. That's right. That's right. <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think Thank we you. got to a good place. <laughs> Bobby, can you plug anything you got before you, oh, you go? Oh, yeah. shit. What do you, what do you want to tell dog, the folks? Shit, dog. Well, yeah, I'm on God. Tiger Belly, Bad Friends with my two podcasts. And um, we'd love to get you on Bad Friends eventually here. Oh, I'd love yeah, it, yeah. Um, and Thanks. also, um, I I guess in August, I'm on a show called Reservation Dogs. It's on FX. So check that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Second season. But how do they find your uh, podcast and everything? Just on YouTube and stuff and all that? 